and welcome to our 13th episode of Medical Cannabis Now, where we'll be talking about the history of Apollo and medical cannabis in Canada. So in 2013, Apollo was nothing more than a concept fueled by founder and president Brian Hendon's intense passion to support anecdotal evidence of patients who told them cannabis worked for their pain, but with clinical evidence. Brian at the time was the co-founder of a pain management clinic where he heard from chronic pain patients disclosing their use of cannabis to deal with pain and the subsequent relief. He began his journey in the pain management industry after a situation where someone close to him had an accident, needed a hospital-based pain clinic, but the wait time to be seen was five years. Working closely with patients at the pain clinic, he kept hearing stories from patients that medical cannabis was often the only thing that worked for them, or was at least a part of their medical treatment routine. It allowed them to work and function again while dealing with the ever-present pain. He also heard how difficult it was for patients to know what dose to take or even what they were buying. Doctors weren't willing to prescribe even though medical access to cannabis had been legalized many years before. The concern was that there wasn't enough research to validate that cannabis could help, despite what patients were saying. Wanting to be a part of the change, he began Apollo Applied Research, which allowed him to begin creating Apollo's first research study protocol. When he finally presented his research proposal to physicians, few showed up to his presentation. And with no doctors willing to prescribe to patients, he wouldn't have any legitimate medical cannabis patients to participate in his research study which led him to opening up Apollo's first prescribing medical cannabis clinic in 2014. With the goal of helping people and providing real research to the academic world, Apollo and its team of healthcare providers started work to work closely with patients to see why certain products worked for some, but not for others. Discovering how important the endocannabinoid system is to one's homeostasis was a huge part of learning how medical cannabis can impact so many different parts of the body and in effect, help with many different conditions. While doctors were aware of medical cannabis's existence, most refused to prescribe due to the lack of academic clinical research and studies on the medicine. Starting with just one prescribing physician, Brian collaborated with the University of Guelph to create the first preliminary research project. Since then, Apollo has worked with a variety of academic partners to conduct and present Apollo's research findings including the University of Toronto, New York University, as well as national and international medical and research conferences. The primary objective of these partnerships were to deliver validated evidence to empower physicians and patients to effectively use medical cannabis. The first goal was to focus on needed research in the field of medical cannabis to treat chronic pain. Coming back to present day, we currently have five locations in the GTA while also seeing patients virtually from across Canada and have a wide array of specialty physicians in our clinic, including psychiatrists, physiatrists, anesthesiologists, rheumatologists, pain specialists, pediatric specialists, and an OBGYN. Apollo's first clinic in North York, Ontario opened its doors to patients in 2014. The second location at Young and Eglinton opened its doors in February, 2018 followed by our Aurora location at 372 Holland View Trail, Unit 201. The Yorkville and Etobicoke locations opened its doors to patients in 2019, for now a total of five brick and mortar locations positioned to serve the growing population in the GTA. Currently, Apollo Cannabis Clinics are treating patients across Canada using a virtual platform conducted by phone or video. With a primary focus on chronic pain, Apollo leads one of Canada's largest medical cannabis studies along with partner clinics. Their ethics approved research includes phase three through four clinical trials, investigator initiated trials such as observational studies, and they were the first cannabis research organization to run a large scale open cohort research study for chronic pain in Canada. The research team has more than 50 years of combined clinical research experience with support from our patients, physicians, team members, and community, we have validated that medical cannabis does help manage chronic pain, can improve mental health, and assist with reducing one's opioid use with our peer-reviewed and published articles titled Medical Cannabis for the Management of Pain and Quality of Life 
in chronic pain patients, a prospective observational study. So patients following Apollo's treatment plan reported that after one month of medical cannabis use, 27% found reduction in pain interference with daily activities and 23% reduction in pain severity. After 12 months of medical cannabis use, 43% reported or found reduction in pain interference with daily activities and a 37% reduction in pain severity. The best part is that patients reported a statistically significant 95% reduction in opioid use following 12 months of medical cannabis use. In 2016, Apollo and Brian launched the largest PTSD medical cannabis study in Canada. Brian Hennon states, for veterans and first responders who struggle daily with post-traumatic stress disorder, treatment options are often limited. This research study is a passion project and it's timely given the national attention that is being given to veterans, first responders, and to mental health awareness overall. There has been a lot of anecdotal evidence and now it's time for validated research. Validating that medical cannabis can improve sleep, overall quality of life for those with PTSD is a huge win for those patients. In 2018, Apollo conducted a driving study with the University Health Network funded by the provincial government to detect roadside safety using a tablet-based screening tool. This research study is intended to help improve police officers' screening methods of cannabis-related impairment at roadsides. The study is still ongoing at the time of this video. Community engagement and education is a large part of Apollo's pillars, and we have teamed up with various social and medical organizations across Canada to help provide cannabis education to their members. In the past, Apollo has worked with CARP, Zoomer Radio, Probus Groups, Bladder Cancer Canada, Multiple Sclerosis Society, Prostate Cancer Canada, Ontario Pain Foundation, the Arthritis Society, and many other health and wellness groups. So what is in store for the future of medical cannabis? Now the future of medical cannabis for patients is truly limitless and we really have no idea how effective it is going to be for so many conditions that people are suffering from. As time goes on, we will continue to study the molecules and individual cannabinoids and we may find that it can be a safe treatment option for much more than we currently know. When we talk to our own patients and doctors, we hear amazing stories of patients coming in to treat one symptom or condition and finding relief for others, such as insomnia or anxiety. Since legalization of recreational cannabis and better education, we have seen an influx of not just medical patients, but healthcare practitioners who are more accepting, open, and interested in learning more. And because of this, the future of medical cannabis is very bright. So how has medical cannabis changed from 2014 to now? In 2014, the landscape of medical cannabis and its research was a risky one as the industry was very new and heavily influenced by bureaucratic regulations, personal and financial risk. Doctors wouldn't prescribe it, patients couldn't afford the medication, and efficacy was difficult to achieve with such limited research. Another large difference from 2014 to now was also the way in which medical cannabis was seen or perceived and talked about by the general public. People used to whisper about it, but now it's more commonly accepted and more people recognize the benefit that it's providing to those that need it. And improving the quality of life for their friends and family who may be struggling. Now we've been able to contribute evidence-based research, not only in Canada, but for physicians and patients internationally. Now we're often asked, what, what are some of our favorite early success stories? One of Apollo's first patients was a woman who was constantly hunched over with pain and couldn't walk on her own. After visiting us at Apollo and consulting with one of our healthcare practitioners, she came back three months later and was a completely different per person, functioning, and more importantly, walking on her own again, with a cane, but walking. My personal favorite was a parent to a young child with autism spectrum disorder. During one of our check-ins with the mother, she tearfully mentioned that since starting treatment with CBD oil, her child was able to say their first words. The child was able to better communicate with their parents and teachers. 
Now, this was a life-changing result for not just the young child, but their family, and even for me to experience that firsthand. And since these early stories, we have seen numerous similar experiences from our patients. Now, a little history on, on medical cannabis in Canada. The regulations for medical cannabis was established in July 2001, and it was very strict on who could qualify as a patient. This was called MMAR, Medical Marijuana Access Program. This covered two main categories, including people with any symptoms treated within the context of providing compassionate end-of-life care, or at least one of the symptoms associated with the following. So severe pain and persistent muscle spasms from multiple sclerosis, from a spinal cord injury or spinal cord disease, severe pain, cachexia, anorexia, weight loss, and or severe nausea from cancer or HIV AIDS, pain from severe forms of arthritis, such as rheumatoid arthritis, and seizures from epilepsy. In April 2014, the Medical Marijuana Access Program was replaced by the Marijuana for Medical Purposes Regulations, or MMPR, by Health Canada. Under the MMPR, legal medical cannabis production is authorized to licensed producers whom Health Canada maintains a public database of. In August 2016, the ACPMR, Access to Cannabis for Medical Purposes, took over as the new official regulations and provided more access for patients, including more cannabis products than just dried flour. An October 2016 national poll by Forum suggests that about 5 million adult Canadians use cannabis at least once a month. On April 13, 2017, a bill to legalize cannabis was introduced to Parliament. It would allow for national use by individuals, 19 and over, and possession of 30 grams worth of cannabis. On June 19, 2018, the Senate passed the bill and the Prime Minister announced the effective legalization date as October 17, 2018. Canada is the second nation to legalize the plant after Uruguay. It's important to note that the bill did not change how medical cannabis was prescribed, but it allowed for easier access and helped to ease the mind of many who were concerned about using it for their own medical purposes. So public possession limits for patients prescribed medical cannabis are the lesser of 150 grams or a 30 day supply. This does not include the 30 grams they are allowed to have of recreational cannabis or cannabis without a prescription. Since the Cannabis Act came into effect on October 17, 2018, it has come with new regulations and improvements that have replaced the ACPMR in order to provide better and consistent access for patients. Patients now have access to products like cannabis oils, capsules, pills, sprays, edibles like gummies or chocolate, pre-rolls, concentrates, and topicals, offering a variety of products allow patients to choose how they wish to use their medication. Thank you so much for watching our 13th episode of Medical Cannabis Now. Medical cannabis has come a long way thanks to the research conducted in Canada. And the future is limitless as to what symptoms and conditions cannabis can help. We hope you learned something about medical cannabis industry, the research, and of course, our own Apollo Clinic. Please leave us any comments or questions you have in the comment sections below, and we will be happy to answer them. As always, it is to your benefit and important to your health to consult with a healthcare practitioner before using medical cannabis for health purposes. If you are considering medical cannabis as a treatment option, we're always here to help support you seven days a week, offering free video and phone appointments across Canada. And we hope to see you soon. Thank you.